uh, living Mami Thailand is full of mental and physical stress. During the last year, I lost two of my friends. Reza tried so hard to achieve his dream. Do you have my voice? My name is Bevan. I was an Iranian journalist who escaped from his own country, which is ruled by religious government. Uh, I believe in freedom, human rights, and democracy. I don't believe in any religion or God. I seek asylum in Australia, which is a free country. After a very difficult journey, I was transferred to Manus Island in PNG. Before this, I lived in Indonesia and I had a very difficult time. There was a lot of days that I went to sleep hungry. After three months, I bought a, a small old fishing boat. beginning of the journey to Australia, our boat started to sink into the sea. We had to struggling with the top of this for 40 hours. We lost hope. We accepted that we will die. That endless moment, the small fishing boat appeared and began to help us. They only rescued 40 out of 65 on board. When our boat sank, in seconds I had to save myself from the dark ocean. I found a piece of wood that I could use while waiting for help. The most horrible thing happened. My friend Kahid and two other men lost their lives in the ocean. I was not able to help. We were then at sea for two days. The police arrested us and put us in a dirty prison. We were all tired, hungry and tired. After two days, I escaped from the roof and I went to Jakarta. After that, I had nothing to lose. I was not able to stay in Indonesia, nor could I return to Iran, so I tried another time to flee to Australia. The second attempt took seven days and eight nights. I struggled with hunger, thirst, and death. We were lost in the ocean when the British ship found us. We were transferred to Christmas Island, and they transferred for fully to Manus Island like criminals.
first day when I was in Manifest Land, all of the people were a bit shocked because they didn't expect this happen. And our condition at first was really awful. Without anything, we had been here detained for 15 months. And we even don't know when we will get out of here. At that time, the relationship between the transferees and the local people was weak. Me and my friends, we don't have anything. We just tried to help them as much as we could. These people in Manasana are really poor people. We were giving them biscuits, drinks, cheese, anything. I just try to keep myself fit as much as I can. I just exercise. I don't want to be sick. But at the end of the night, when I want to sleep, I can't. I just think about my future. Always I'm just thinking about what can be the consequences of making a bad decision. In my life, uh, before I haven't seen people harm themselves. But nowadays, happen again and again. Most people can go back to their countries, their lives they have been persecuted. Sometimes when I talk to them, they say, what is the reason that I should survive? What is the reason that I should leave? My country is ruled under the Islamic government. They are really fanatic. If you have done any political thing, which is against their belief and against their religion, the politics, they will kill you or they will take you and they will keep you for a long time and then your family don't know where you are. The problem is because of the, our passport, we can't enter any country. We have to go to the embassy, we have to apply first, and it may take a long time. I have to leave my country just in few days, two or three days. On the east of Serbia, there was a meeting between transferees and culture and immigration. They told us that you will never ever go to Australia. Your process here will take a long, a long time. And they said, this country even may not approve you. If you want to apply to another country, we can help you. We didn't know what to do. Because of that, the people started doing peaceful protests. In a Christian city, 10 days, we will give you a definite answer. They came again and they said, sorry, we can't do anything. We don't have any answer for you. The people they start, they start again protesting. This time, they all came in front of the main gate and just they were shouting. And the next day, in front of our compound, a lot of local were gathering. It belongs pigs and machetes. Just in front of our compound, there were around 80 to 100 people. I want to tell you about the incident night, 16th, 17th of February. At 9.30, the power was cut off. And all of the transfer we just hear shouting, screaming. The locals and the police were trying to invade the compound and break in the fences. I just was scared and I can shut down the door. When the people start shouting, not all of the people are being scared. No one was talking to me.
After 40 minutes, they came and they opened the door. They said, don't get this safe. Get out of the room. They gathered all of the people in the main yard. While I was walking and I was seeing my friends, suddenly I felt very heavy thing at my back. They were abusing us, they were cursing us, and they said, we don't want to see any of you in our land. We hate all of you. And after that, they were treating all of us in the main yard, under the rain, under the sun. The compound was full of blood. The next few days, you might be sick. One of your friends is out of the way. Uh, Libby, Mami Sayan, she's full of mental and physical stress. During the last year, I lost two of my friends. Reza tried so hard to achieve his dream. Uh, he was a lovely man. Unfortunately, he was not the last meeting a month ago. My friend Hamid lost his life. After the incident night, and I was looking at myself in the mirror. I said, so am I in a safe place? What should I do? I don't know what to say really. I used to have a bright future. But if I want to go back to my country, I don't know what may happen to me. But here, I have neither safety and security and no good life. I don't want to pray because I have no religion. And even those people who pray, they pray even worse. These things don't work on another side of that.